for more now on this issue, I'm joined by Brian Becker, the National Director of the Answer Coalition, and Matthew R.J. Brodsky, the Director for Policy at the Jewish Policy Center. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. Uh, looking at the issue of Syrian chemical weapons, nobody knows for sure that chemical weapons have been used by the Syrian army. In fact, to use the words of the White House, we do not have an airtight case. Brian Becker, let me start with you. The bottom line question, should the United States get involved in the Syrian civil war? Well, make no mistake about it. The U.S. is involved in the civil war. It's been using proxy governments, Qatar, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, to funnel weapons into the Syrian opposition. It is embarked, as it was in Libya and it was in Iraq, on regime change. And so the U.S. is largely responsible, I would say predominantly responsible, for the civil war that's taken 70,000 lives in Syria. The question now is, will the U.S. directly intervene, either through a no-fly zone or a military bombing campaign, as it did in, in, in Libya? But make no mistake about it, the administration in Washington is involved in regime change. It will do nothing uh, to stop until the Assad government is gone. And I think that's wrong because it violates the basic sovereignty of the Syrian people. The Syrian people and they alone should be the determiners of their own destiny. Matt? I will uh, disagree with that perspective. The Obama administration has done everything that it can to stay out by not providing any form of lethal assistance to the opposition. Now, were the Obama administration to have gone and become a little bit more involved in the beginning, this probably would not have turned into a civil war to the extent that it has. The point is now, with close to 80,000 dead, the sectarian violence, there are now such few, so few options left on the table for something to happen. Now, the fact is, other countries such as France, such as Britain, such as Israel, have said that they have proof that, the, that there is chemical weapons that have been used. And Brit Britain, the very fact Britain, Britain and France are the former colonizers of the Middle East. Uh, Israel is at war against Syria and against all the Arab regimes. It's no, it's makes no, no question difference. that and they're going to use Israel, chemical weapons as the, as the issue, the Israel red line, so to speak, no to carry out military intervention. for a regime change to begin with in Syria. Israel, bom Israel bombed Syria in 2007. Right. You know? They Israel bombed used, a nuclear Israel, reactor. Israel used they bombed a nuclear they reactor. They have no right they to have bomb proof. Syria. Israel so obviously they brought proof. Okay, let me just get back. Okay. okay. All right. Let me get, let me get back. So clearly they're capable of getting proof. And when they say that they have proof, yeah. I would say that that's very believable. Okay. Let me get back to chemical weapons. I mean, one of the things that the UN said today was that the evidence that has so far been provided on the use of chemical weapons doesn't meet the standard for the UN to appoint any kind of investigation into the use of chemical weapons in Syria yet. That might but change. But they've been cooling down their heels in Cyprus. Right. For two months right but now, un unable to get into we, the country. We don't know that. Brian, let me get to something else, um, and that is Israel is saying that chemical weapons have been used in Syria. Um, the fact, and another one of Israel's concerns, is that these chemical weapons could fall into the hands of the rebels, or he other heavy weapons could fall into the hands of rebels, and that is their concern, and they're calling for the United States to get involved. Is that a valid concern? Well, I don't think Israel's concerns are valid. Let's never forget, Israel has stolen a part of Syria. It invaded Syria in 1967. It annexed the Golan Heights. It bombed Syria in 2007, which it has no right to do, even if it's a nuclear program. Uh, Syria has the right to provide uh, nuclear energy to its people. Uh, Israel, unlike Syria, refuses to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. So when we look to Israel and say, do they have a legitimate concern to define when Western power should intervene? I would say no. In fact, the Israelis have been the aggressors. Mm -hmm. Matt, let's is, look at... Israel well, is not the one incidentally asking the United States to get involved. The, the, the Syrian rebels themselves, the Free Syrian Army, Well, that says a lot about the them. Free Syrian rebels. I mean, well, the when fact you're saying that, that you want the, the people regime. to actually be in charge of the revolution, then when what they are asking for is for what, American what, involvement... What surprised Israel and what surprised the United States is the Assad government is a very tenacious government. It was unable to be it's overthrown quickly. It's murdered 80,000 of its own not people. Only because That's it has tenacious, a strong, correct. Not only okay. a strong army, but because it has a very big, broad base of support within Syria. That can't be argued against. It has its okay, all white support, Matt, which moment, is Matt. We have very a few percent. Okay, we have a situation here where Brian is telling us that the United States is already involved by using proxy forces, that it is arming those rebels he by using proxy forces. He was incorrect about that. No, we're not. Qatar, you, okay. Qatar and Saudi you, Arabia okay, well, are then, not providing well, the support we question. want. Do you want to see direct U.S. involvement, or as they call it here, boots on the ground? Well, I think since we've decided, or since President Obama said, that moving or using chemical weapons is a red line, there must be consequences for a red line if the United States is to be taken credibly 
in foreign policy. The and Ameri and the Iran American, the is American, certainly the watching, people, and so is North Korea. The American people are sick and tired of the U.S. intervening, overthrowing governments in Iraq and Libya and now Syria. When does it end? This when does, the, when does, the, US, when does the U.S. There's both an idealist right. and a realist We've got 10 form. 10 seconds, Matt, you get the last word. There's both an idealist and a, and, a, and a realist form of thinking when it comes to foreign policy. This works with both for humanitarian reasons and for okay. the realism reason. We need to... Helping stop 80,000 from dying. Okay. We're going to have to leave it there. Gentlemen, thanks for joining Thank us. You. Thanks. Thanks.